Um, so welcome to um, the Northboro Southboro Regional School Committee meeting of Wednesday, February 26th at 731. <clears throat> um, the first action on the minute is to, um, sorry, um, to vote and approve the action minutes of December 18th and to vote to approve and retain the executive session minutes of December 18th. So moved. Second. Right. So first by Dan, second by Paul Bucca. Is there any discussion? Do we have to do a, um, to retain, do we have to do a, a yes or no? Or just to, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So all those who approve? Okay. Um, our next is the educational policy. We have the approval of the music department's overnight field trip um, to Massachusetts All State <coughs> Music Festival, March 5th through 7th. And we did um, discuss this at the last meeting. Um, so they are ready to launch their field, their trip. So moved. Second. Okay, so all those, do we wanna do both of them? Yes, and we'll do uh, approval of DECA's overnight field trip uh, to the DECA International Career Development Conference. April 28th to May 3rd, 2020 in Nashville, Tennessee. Say motion to approve. Okay. I'd second that as well. All right, so vote. I think Dr. Walsh, we have our largest contingency going. Correct. So. Really, yeah? Yes. Nashville? Yes. Can I be a shower? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all those in favor? Sure. Those opposed? All right, motion passes. Um, and the new business is legislative update. So just an update on the um, Student um, Opportunity Act. Um, we did receive an additional $42,450 as a result of the new legislation. Um, we are required to um, create a student opportunity plan um, as a result of receiving that funding and explicitly articulate how that funding will be spent. Those plans need to be approved by April 1st. Um, so we will be bringing it to the March agenda um, for the school committee's um, approval. It also requires community input. And because we're embarking on the strategic planning process, we're going to use a lot of the community feedback and input that we've received thus far from that process to develop this plan. So can I ask what, what just conceptually, what is a student opportunity plan? What, I mean, what does it do? Or? So it's um, basically how we're going to um, spend the money to improve instruction and directly impact students. Um, okay. <laughs> As opposed to what we spend all the other millions of dollars on? That's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and our next is um, interview of candidates for vacancy. So we currently have an open seat on the Regional School Committee and it's a Northboro um, open seat for someone who resigned. So we only have one candidate and it's Lauren Bailey Jones. Do you wanna come join us? Um, and as you know, Lauren currently serves on the Northboro School Committee. Um, so do you wanna share background and why sure. you're going to join yes. the committee? Um, so I am in the middle of my second year on the Northboro K-8 board. Um, and so in the past year and a half, almost two years, I've gained some experience um, working on the budgets, um, getting to know how um, the district works as a whole, both at, at the regional level as well as uh, Northboro individually. Um, and I would like to, I guess, just lend my newfound skills to the regional committee as well. Does anyone have any questions for Lauren? Uh, so I, I, I saw your letter. It, I mean, it, it, it almost hedged on whether you were going to run for the position again in, in May. When I, it, 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 kind of like a trial for us here that, Lauren, do you think you'll put your name in the ring? For That's a good question. Um, I think I'd have to think about it. Um, I know that it is a large commitment, um, being on multiple subcommittees and task forces, although several are wrapping up this year. Um, so I, I would have to think about that and sort of the point in my life where I'm at with a lot of um, other, yeah. other things going on. We could on. use the help, certainly. Um, so I would be open to it, um, but I haven't made my decision yet. Thanks. Yes. 
think there's actually three companies as of May. For regional specifically? For, yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking at the, the papers there were like, yeah, mm -hmm. there were still. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 it definitely was a help. And you've been a pleasure to listen to. And I, 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 you know, I've enjoyed listening to your insights. And I think you'd be a great person to have, you know, if you were, were willing to win, willing to run again in the, um, in May or next year. It's funny because uh, about two years ago this time, I interviewed You'd for the regional interim <laughs> position and did oh, not right. get it. Um, <clears throat> and then ran for North Row. And so sort of came full circle here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just going to give my plug for running. <laughs> I mean, I think you would, um, you would be an asset to the committee um, because you, you have this kind of even-tempered demeanor and you always are able to say something, you know, cogent and you know, very insightful, um, and I think you know that's that's we always need um, good committee members that can kind of um, be relatively. Um, uh, I don't know, just kind of even keeled and and able to. So, um, if I can do it from Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> Good point, Lynn. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank um, you. So do I need a motion? So does it, do I have a motion? Paul? So I move that we accept uh, Lauren Bailey Jones to the uh, position of uh, school committee member from the town of Northborough. So Second. In, for this, yeah, yeah, no, uh, how, does, how does it technically work? Is the Northborough members only voting? I think so, I think so yeah. And yeah. do you need, how many do you need to oh. do that? Well, it's. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Three, Hopefully, I'd love to vote for you, present. Lauren. I was <laughs> thrilled that your name was there, but I don't. I can't. Well, two. I mean, it would be Sean and I would yeah. vote. Whoever's. Whoever's here? Yeah. And is that. Do you, is there a particular quorum of the Northboro members that is well, needed for the this? Last, the last time we voted um, two years ago, Lauren. Mm -hmm. um, Northboro. Did the primary voting and then symbolically everyone voted yeah. but we did not require a quorum of the northboro portion of right it was yeah. just the northboro yeah. which is great because yeah. i'd love to do this yeah. tonight yeah. yeah okay good <coughs> first all those in favor all those in favor <laughs> okay congratulations, congratulations. Lauren. congratulations. Lauren. Board. thank so, you so much and, you have to be and we now. have karen wilbur with us tonight who can swear you in immediately <laughs> so you can join our meeting. Participate. Yeah. Voting there you go. Hey, have a packet. Okay. Right. Turn your oh, you already have one. Should I come to you? You can do it right here if you'd like. Raise your right hand. Lauren Bailey Jones solemnly swear that you will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties <coughs> incumbent upon you as a member of the Northboro Southboro Regional School Committee in accordance with the bylaws of the town and the laws of the Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And I'd just like to thank Karen for taking the time to, to be here this evening. So thank you. Okay, so our next um, item is the Assistant Superintendent Search Committee. So we, the um, application process concludes, or closes this Friday. Um, we have over 30 applications at this time for the position. Um, we did, I did send out a communication to the community um, for community representation. <coughs> so we have a pretty um, well-balanced uh, list of people who are interested in serving. So the next step will be to create the team and send out the dates and, and get that process moving forward. So the next item in the agenda is the FY19 audit report, and I will um, turn it over to Becky. So included in your packet um, is a draft of the FY19 audit report that was presented to the Operations and Budget 
subcommittee. Uh, we uh, spoke with um, Tom Scanlon, um, who headed up this audit committee. Uh, there were a few recommendations that were um, made that we will be incorporating and will be looking um, into including in our practices in the finance office. Um, and just there is one um, sig note um, also, there was a finding um, for FY18 for the IDEA special education grant that the funds were not expended within the time period. However, we have worked with um, Desi on this and we are able to expend those funds um, in this fiscal year. And we have also put some procedures in place. Um, Marie and I have, have sat down um, to make sure that this does not happen again. So um, that was something that was um, addressed specifically um, with Tom and will be included in the report when we get the final version. But overall, he did say that everything looked great, that there was nothing um, of significance um, for us to be concerned about. That was just the one point that they wanted to, and it was a small amount considering the amount of money that flows through is about $30,000. Can I just make one comment too? One change in the audit report too is that the, the OPEB liability is, mm -hmm. is now actually included on our audit. Um, so that is something for us we'll be talking about later <coughs> next on the agenda, but something for us to keep an eye on in terms of it impacts our overall um, you know, credit rating. Mm -hmm. so. Tan? Um, on the one finding, was there, you know, was there a particular issue that resulted in the oversight? Was it a training matter? Was it, you know, yes. is it, so it's something that is, you know, you definitely will see is corrected. And are there other similar issues that could happen that where training needs to happen in other parts to ensure that? This was actually a new piece to um, the grant. It was a proportionate share, which means that we need to reach out to private schools within the two communities to um, offer um, grant funding for their services as well. And mm -hmm. Marie and her team has done a great job at trying to reach out to, um, to the schools um, without success. Uh, and so there was a little bit of um, miscommunication um, as to when those funds had to be expended and how they could be expended. And mm -hmm. so we have, um, as I said, worked with DESI to clear up that um, confusion and um, we now have a plan in place and Marie has actively been working with um, the schools to ensure that this does not happen again. Okay, thank you both. Was that Title I funds? No, IDEA 94142. Paul? Yeah, so just, I mean, to expand on that a little bit more, the, the, some of these grants, when they come from the federal government, mm -hmm. you know, although they kind of come to us, we have to make those funds available to any private school uh, proportionally Within, within the districts as well. Some are, some are willing to t take advantage of it, not very many, but there are one or two. Others say, no, no way, we don't want the federal government involved in us. And then some others just don't return phone calls or, or letters, and, and we get a little bit stuck with that. So that, I mean, that was kind of part of it. And mm -hmm. I mean, the, proced the procedures just need to be tightened up a little bit. The, the couple of other little things they found were, were incredibly trivial. I mean, you know, we're looking to make sure that we like balance out to the penny the prepaid luncheon accounts and stuff that we have and uh, and at the end of every year uh, you know although our bottom lines are, are all okay with you know they'd like us to do some budget transfers to get every individual line item netted out to zero so that you kind of just do some transfer things around it's um, but you know I took some some quotes from from Tom as he as he gave us the audit he talked about the team being very responsive to all of his requests for for information, and I thought that was terrific. Um, very well managed school district is a is a is a direct quote from his from his comments. And then to Greg's point, the OPEB balance sheet line went from 31.9 million dollars in 2018 to 34.9 million dollars in 2019. So it went up like 10 percent. So we have a and an how much is in our OPEB account right now? Uh, well, we'll talk about that a little bit later <laughs> on. <laughs> um, but uh, we have a. Unfortunately, that's an easy answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a state law that requires us to have this tidied up in the next 16 years. Is it 35, 2035, or 2040? 2040. 2040. To have all, Both all of it. Towns and school districts need to fully fund their, their OPEB liabilities mm -hmm. um, per state law. So that's 
When you say 34 million, that's the district, not just the regional. Just that's, uh, that's the regional. No, that's the region. That's, that's region. just us. Okay. That's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right. Not Northboro, Southboro, so much. Those yeah. towns, the individual towns, yeah. it's in there. We'll put <coughs> money for the key to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, we're kind of a separate legal entity than the. That's right. Yeah. So just so large. And, and on that topic, um, Becky did create an amortization mm -hmm. table of what type of investment would be required to meet that target. So we are looking at, at and it's significant annual investment to meet that target. Um, so the sooner we start, mm -hmm. um, the better. Okay, so do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. So Dan, second, do I have a second? Yep. All right, so first by Dan, second by Paul Bucca. All those in favor? Our next is the establishment of an OPEB trust. And again, Becky will uh, give a brief overview and presentation of, of PARS okay. and the um, votes that are required. So we have been working with PARS um, very closely, um, and we have three votes um, to present to the committee tonight to consider um, establishing the OPEB trust with PARS. Um, for those of you who weren't here last um, um, PARS is an organization that we would be working with to establish this trust. Um, they have clients uh, throughout uh, New England and um, many local communities and school districts um, work with them to establish their OPEP trust. Um, it, the benefits in going with um, PARS is that we would not have to engage legal counsel to establish our own trust fund. They have a trust fund that is set up that is something that we can move into pretty quickly. Um, and so there are three votes that do need to be taken by the committee. Um, the first is um, to accept Chapter 32B, Section 20, which is actually um, to establish an OPEB fund that has not been done by this committee as of yet. Um, the second vote is, um, again, under that same um, Mass General Law and section, but this is the prudent investor um, rule that we would um, need to establish, which means that we will be prudent investors of our money in the OPEB trust. Um, and then finally, the last one is vote three, which would be um, to engage or to um, Yes, engage the services of PARS for our trust. Um, it's a lengthy vote. The entire thing does not have to be read if we want to. <laughs> I mean, unless you want to. Um, but uh, just to give an overview um, as you're um, making that motion, however, we would need the committee to sign this document so that we could um, file that with um, PARS. So those are the three votes. So I would move to vote. That we approve all three um, without a reading. I'd second that. All right, first by Dan, second by Paul. Um, all those in favor? All right, so that passes. Now, do we sign this after? So before we leave this evening, we just have to make sure we have signatures. So. Okay. Okay. And this is in our budget. We have a line item already in our budget, right? For this? Okay. Um, okay, so our next business is the superintendent's report to the committee. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Walsh for her principal's report. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, so fair warning, this report started out 12 pages um, and I warned Greg before I submitted it, got it down to four. Um, and I know we just spoke about some of these items but I wanted to follow back up. Um, so first and foremost, I wanted to thank uh, Victoria Haskins for her sharing of her painting and um, Emma Balfour for her sharing of her mug photo. Um, I love whenever we can support the arts and share the work of our students. Uh, jumping right in, Poetry Out Loud I spoke briefly about in our last school committee meeting. I just wanted to go back and reiterate the powerful um, event that students get to participate in and really commend Mr. Zarnecki <coughs> for creating um, a class next year called Spoken Word. You heard Ms. Bitar talk about it, in which you know realignment of some resources this year, we're replacing postmodernism you're taking some of that project-based work that students do in that Poetry Out Loud competition and um, put it into practice in the classroom every day. So that's very exciting work that you see come to life um, for students daily next year. Moving down, mark your calendars. 
So uh, our jazz night is tomorrow, is next week, March 4th at 7 o'clock, and then our jazz festival is quickly approaching after that. Um, thank you to our jazz musicians for being here for 8th grade parent night. Um, our Laramie project is tomorrow for the school showing. Um, really appreciate when you can take difficult topics like the Laramie project and incorporate the arts and how to share those topics um, within this work. You know, thank you to Ms. Morrison and thank you to Mr. Kelly and working together with students in how to have a discussion afterwards. We'll have adjustment counselors there as well. Um, and again, thank you to the students for taking on these challenging topics. Um, continuing on down, it's exciting to say that with the you know multi-year approach that we've taken with our drama program, this year as it did last year, um, we're moving on with um, the improv show towards the end of the year. All 51 students who audition for the show do participate. Um, gives an opportunity for them to take their dramatic performances to a new level and practice inclusivity for all of our students. Towards the bottom, Andrew Lee continues to crush the world of mathematics. He was a third place finisher in the 2020 Who Wants to Be a Mathematician. Um, he earned a cash prize and so did our math department. And really exciting work with the support of Central Office. Some of our math educators participated in um, some advanced level um, calculator, graphing calculator, professional development. This grant, this award will help us buy the graphing calculators to continue the work. So thank you to Andrew Lee um, and our math team for that support. Under activities and clubs, Best Buddies um, this year expanded some of the opportunities through their rhythm and dance um, collaboration. We had 300 different parents and community members, 150 different dancers <coughs> put on a phenomenal show. What this does for Algonquin, not only does it allow the opportunity for the community to continue to integrate with our students, it allows our Best Buddies programs to have our students participate in that show production, from lighting, from concessions, from sales, for putting on the whole performance, and again, practicing those real life skills. Um, shout out to our robotics team. First ever newsletter went out uh, last month. I shared it in the one call. And they are showcasing their robot this Saturday in Connecticut. They are very, very excited about that. Um, thank you to our DECA school store uh, students and our business students. They embraced the challenge of expanding the school store opportunities and they are a little mini restaurant during our 10 minute mindful moment. Serving breakfast to the students, snacks, giving them a chance to practice real life skills overcome some of the challenges that happen when you open that new business under a new concept. Um, so, but they took on the challenge and really appreciate their work. Um, it is well liked and the students are upset with me that we don't offer it on Monday. So that is a good, that's, um, good feedback from them. Wishing DECA luck at States. They leave very soon. I believe um, they're packing their bags tomorrow, I think. I know I'm checking bags tomorrow, so I think that they're leaving tomorrow. Very excited. Um, they have been practicing over break, uh, wishing them the best of luck. Moving down to the Science Olympiad, Mr. Wadman and Mr. Largest um, and students came together and they went to an MIT meet where they performed very well. They had six build ahead engineering projects. What a great way to take what you're learning in class, collaborate cross curricular with students, and then go ahead and enter competition. Um, they have another competition coming up and I just love to see when they can see their work come to fruition in front of them, come to life. Our prom fashion show, always a good success, well attended, our variety show for our seniors went very, very well. And I just wanted to um, bring a shout out to our student council members and Ms. Carmignani. They are working very closely to continue their lip dub work. So they're kind of reinventing the lip dub that they did. They started it in the, um, uh, the pep rally and they're gonna continue the work right over April vacation. Big project, really a way to practice inclusivity at every level. Down in athletics, um, I will leave the full athletics report to Mr. Masserino when he comes back to give his winter season report. But I just wanted to thank Mr. Masserino and Ms. Braun for their support and having a very successful uh, gymnastics um, meet this last Saturday. The gymnasts won. They're having an excellent, excellent performance. They're on to states. So our gymnastics team is uh, four years in a row mid-watch championships. And so we wish them very um, luck this Saturday when they go on to states. Boys hockey is playing right now. I don't have any updates because I don't want to text in the middle of school committee meeting, but I'm hoping that Moss texts me, wishing them good luck. Um, girls hockey goes on to their first round of playoffs this Saturday, equally exciting. The speed of play for our hockey teams is phenomenal if you've ever attended a hockey game. Um, very quick pace. Boys basketball, uh, they won this past week and so they're on to St. John's tomorrow night in their quarterfinals. So we're wishing all of our athletes good luck in their um, postseason playoffs rounds of play. And we get ready, obviously, to start spring sports um, in just a few weeks. Um, moving on down to 
uh, department updates. I just wanted to thank our social studies department. They uh, worked really closely together to realign some resources last year and they uh, brought on criminal justice in America and positive psychology. Very well received curriculum by our students that we had to add extra sections for the second semester. So it's great when you can see the curriculum um, become modified to meet our current you know, global student curricular needs. Um, going on to guidance, in working with administration, all of our department chairs, we, uh, for the third year in a row, um, took some great feedback on eighth grade parent night and we uh, kind of reorganized it and wanted to say thank you to Ms. Key um, and Dr. Medina. I cannot remember if I thanked them at the last school committee meeting, so you always double thank versus forgetting to thank. Um, Ms. Key and Dr. Medina were there to present the parents' perspective in how to schedule your students' classes as they navigate um, the four years at high school. So I just wanted to make sure to reiterate that. Very powerful. I included the link to the video in case you wanted to see Ms. Key and her you know, acting career. No. It was well done, <laughs> very much appreciated. Um, moving on to fine arts. Um, Ms. Duffy, it's the last line. There's a lot of really good information in there. Thank you to our, our artists who are willing to share some of their pictures. I've included them in the update. Ms. Duffy also took it upon her own to write um, a little grant opportunity for competition. Our students will be competing in the vans, like the shoes, high school custom culture 2020 competition. So the shoes get mailed to Algonquin and they're gonna design their own pair. It's just fun when they can um, kind of take that urban approach to, or real life approach to their art and apply it. For science, thank you to Ms. Gilpin. She's one of our newer biology teachers. Uh, she went and worked with some community resources and was able to bring um, a pig kidney to our students to, to have that real life work, um, working with the veterinary science professor and in our honors biology program. It's just something our students have had the opportunity to do before. I love it. In another life, I was a science and math teacher, physiology, so I was really excited and ran right up to her room and thanked her for this work and the students really enjoyed um, the opportunity. For uh, student support, I included another video. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Best Buddies, Ms. Hines, Mr. Hausman. They've partnered up and our students are what, one of the main featured um, high schools when you're looking at how we're preparing our students for that workforce readiness skills transition. And they're in this video and I thought it would be a great opportunity to get, get the um, time to take a look at the video. Moving down to library, um, Ms. Honey and the library team, Ms. Amberson, they work together to make the library more than just the books. They take the time to make this a space about how to de-stress, how to make a, a connection, cross co-curricular work. And I know Kim does a great job including the numbers, but she also goes above and beyond in how to make books come to life for students and how to make this a meeting community place. So wanted to make sure I thanked her for that. Um, for our Harbinger, I just wanted to make sure that um, Catherine and Gabriella were recognized for their special achievement award on their um, Triple E article. I know I sent it out in the one call, but it's always great to bring um, the Harbinger to the forefront. They do some excellent work and they do some really difficult reporting on an array of topics. Um, and then lastly, down for administration, I love the fact that some of our faculty members who are in the faculty book club took some of the work from the Happiness Advantage when we read that as a, a faculty read in the book club and put it into practice. They did positive note writing before an exam to in, improve students' performance during examination. Um, and I attempted to link and send one of our singing Valentines out in a one call. Just thought it was a really nice thing to share. Some of our, our parents haven't seen what it's like to send a singing Valentine to each other on Valentine's Day. That's it. So just one point, great update. You know, I particularly want to thank the, uh, the school, the administration, the students for re continuing to rem remember Specialist Brian Arsenault and when they honored him in, in the, uh, prior to the hockey game. Um, you know, a, a graduate of Algonquin, um, killed serving our country overseas, and, um, you know, the students in this school continues to remember him, remember his family, and every time you say his name, he's, you know, he's in, in some respects still here. So I, I commend you and the rest of the school for cont you know, continuing to remember um, Specialist Arsenal. Well done. So, um, I know I'm not trying, I'm not, I know it's not obvious, Sharon, but um, Hayden, when he was home for Christmas, they went to a pond um, skating over Northboro behind the park on 135, I think it is. And Mrs. Arsenal was walking with a friend of hers and stopped and like 
talk to the kids and mm -hmm. I think some of them you could when Jake was a senior they could actually buy the jerseys so they have their hockey jerseys from that night and um, she took pictures mm -hmm. and she was talking to the boys and stuff so that was really good that's really nice so okay so next uh, in your packet is Enrollment. Uh, enrollment as of 124.20. Um, there are no significant variances at this time. And then I'll have Becky speak to the FY20 monthly general fund expenditure reports. And we have two reports, one as of December 31st and the second as January as of January 31st. Okay, Chris, so there are um, two reports in your packet. Um, just to speak to the January 31st report, since that is the, um, the most recent um, as of the end of um, January, we had $651,971 remaining on the bottom line, or 2.75% um, of the budget. Uh, we are looking at our expenditures, and we are looking at um, you know, our, all of our various line items, and so I do anticipate seeing that number come down over the next few months um, as we approach the end of the fiscal year. But there were no significant variances from month. I'll move that we vote to approve both until audited. Second. Do you have any questions or Paul? No. <laughs> okay. <No. laughs> I mean, um, okay, so first by Dan and second by Paul, is that right? Um, yep. Paul Baca. All right. All those in favor? Okay. So next we have the FY20 statement of revenue. Uh, vote to approve as of December 31st, 31st, 2019, and as of January 31st, 2020. So moved. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Next. We have the FY21 budget priorities, which will speak in more detail with the recommended budget presentation. We also have the budget calendar updated. The um, FY21 capital plan. And I just um, would like to make a comment that um, over vacation, we did have a significant failure at one of the elevators um, at Algonquin. And we are working with our insurance uh, companies to see if it's covered. Um, and we'll have more information about, about um, if it will be if costs will be covered through insurance. But it could has the potential to be a significant expense. And then lastly is the FY21 recommended budget presentation. So I'm pleased this evening to share with the school committee the FY21 recommended budget. Um, this budget re reflects a tremendous amount of work and planning um, with a variety of stakeholders, including the high school administration, faculty and staff, and central office leadership team. And as you know, the, the creation of a budget is a process that begins early on in the academic year um, in, in September. And we begin the conversations. And currently, we are at the phase where um, we are making a recommended budget to the school committee um, and hopefully have it voted this evening. Um, the March, um, the town meeting is in Southborough, Saturday, March 28th, and the Northborough town meeting is uh, Monday, April 27th. So the three guiding documents that drive the work around the budget are the district's vision, mission, and the um, budget priorities, which are approved by the school committee on an annual basis. Um, this year's budget priorities are to maintain high quality staff, instructional programming, 
and instructional resources to strive to achieve class size according to school committee policy, to prepare all students for high levels of success in college and career readiness, fund the initiatives of the school improvement plan, and create and fund a short and long-term capital plan. So the last time when um, the preliminary budget was presented, um, the budget increase was a 3.9% increase, um, or a 20, for a budget of $24,701,586. Um, we went back to the table and had further discussions around um, any potential reductions. We were able to reduce the budget um, by another $139,213 um, for a recommended budget of $24,562,000, or a 3.31% increase over FY20. So when we look at um, where the budget reductions took place from the preliminary budgets um, that we began with, it's really s staffing shifts and line items um, totaling $506,642. We had special education tuition out shifts, um, students aging out of special education out of district programming for a total of $416,700. And then we have um, staff reductions, uh, 3.0 FTEs totaling $118,974. So a little bit more about the staffing. So the, educate, the staffing includes um, an educational support professional position. It also includes two tutor positions and um, a point four educator um, totaling, again, $118,974. So the budget drivers this year, um, increased costs of tuition, uh, uh, tuition out for collaborative increased by $107,656. Um, the student information system upgrade shifting from iPass to PowerSchool um, is $22,844. We had an increase in, of insurance of $165,224. And lastly, contractual obligations and line item increases totaling $491,201. So again, um, the recommended FY2021 budget is $24,562,373. Um, a recommended budget increase of $786,925,000, uh, or a 3.31% increase over FY20. So next I'll speak to um, how the uh, assessments for each of the communities. So if you take the total budget and reduce um, chapter 78, um, regional transportation and revenues, uh, that totals uh, $4,2,377. That um, is subtracted from the total budget. So the FY 2021 budget off after offsets is $20,559,996. Um, we then look at the North Borough and South Borough minimum local contribution. That number is provided to us by um, the state. Um, and then the FY 2021 budget after required contributions is the amount that is apportioned by the regional agreement. So um, before I get into the apportion by the regional agreement, um, it was um, discussed at the re uh, budget uh, operational subcommittee um, to apply $300,000 of excess and deficiency um, to lower the community's assessments. Um, even with a $300,000 application of E&D, um, the school committee remains in line with its, its school committee policy uh, for excess and deficiency. So the bottom line for um, Northborough is um, a 4.36% increase for a $534,226 increase. And for Southboro, it's a negative 2.08% increase or a negative $158,672 over FY20. So again, um, some of the growth areas, um, it's really a level services budget. Um, the growth areas are the student information system, uh, some instructional resources, and um, an increase in uh, tr translation services um, for the increased diversity of the population that we're seeing out of Algonquin. 
And at this time, I'd be happy to answer any questions from the committee. So Greg, the OPEB line? Yes. So what are you suggesting? So um, currently we have um, a minimal amount. We have an OPEB line item that is new to this uh, fiscal year budget. And we have a minimal amount applied to that amount currently. I think it's um, a little under um, $15,000. Um, we also have money sitting in our revolving accounts that we're going to be transferring into the OPEB. So the total amount we'll be depositing into our OPEB accounts is $150,000 uh, for um, fiscal Y21. Um, okay. And then what do you see ongoing year after year? A, a set amount uh, could fluctuate, but what do you see? Yeah, but I think that, um, you know, my recommendation would be a minimum of $500,000 um, annually um, to really make a considerable impact on that OPEB liability that we have as a district. We can no longer wait to fund OPEB um, because 20, 2040 is not that far away when, when you're talking about the overall liability that we have. I think we'll need to be, be creative of how we fund OPEB and we're actually going to have to search out other revenue sources so that we have a su su um, sustainable and significant revenue stream to um, apply to our OPEB uh, funding. And then was just one more follow-up on that. Do you think 150000 then for this first year is enough? Should it be more than that? Um, I think that um, given the budget landscape, I think um, establishing the OPEB trust, and um, I think it, it's not enough, <laughs> um, but I think it's a start. And I think um, I'm glad that we're starting to make the investment and that we'll have $150,000 in our OPEB account um, at the end of, of next year. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, this has, been, this has been a tough budget year for us. You know, we, we actually, you know, the, the new contract came in uh, and we've got some contractual obligations as a result of that. At the same time, student populations actually decreased. And, you know, we wanted to be cognizant of that as we were kind of looking at, at the budget process. We, we did because of the governor's package, we picked up a little more funding than we had expected. And as a result, we had a much higher excess and deficiency account than we've had in, in the last several years anyway. Uh, you know, I think part of it is terrific management in terms of how the schools have been run, and kudos to everybody who's involved in that. But, you know, it, we were able to take a few hundred grand and kind of pop it into here to keep the budget assessments, you know, more realistic. Um, you know, I think in the future, one of the things that we need to give some thought to is, you know, what is the yin and the yang of, of taking the E&D excess money, if we have money, and putting it towards the assessment, or taking the excess money from E&D and putting it into OPEP trust. And that's gonna be a, a you know, a, a difficult decision for this committee, I think, every year between now and 2040. Um, you know, there are some other, there are some other issues with OPEP that are also, you know, future challenges for the committee that, you know, you should, for those of you that are gonna be on it for a number of years in the future, you need to become aware of them. You know, it's the, the actuarial tables that drive what that number is are all based on certain assumptions that have been put in in terms of, you know, how many people retire early, how, how many of them live till they're eligible for Medicare, what is the, you know, what do we assume we're gonna earn for interest on the money that we put in the trust, is, is always a, a, a big function of, of the, the math. And right now, we have a contractual obligation to pay 75% of the health care benefits of any retired uh, teacher or, or any member of the collective, uh, the, the unions, from the time they retire until they're Medicare eligible. That's a contractual number and could in fact be negotiable, I guess, in years to come if if, if we just wanted to put it on the table. Uh, I think by law we can't go lower than 50% is the way the current law reads, but you know, laws change too. Um, you know, this is a, a, you know, a half a million dollars a year to pop into this every year from now until 2040 to just get, get up to even. That's an enormous challenge from a budget point of view for this district. And, 
and you know we need to be very kind of aware of it. And, and those on the, the operating budget subcommittee have gotten a little bit more of a taste of it than the rest of you, but but boy, it's it's gonna you're all gonna be very very educated on OPEB and actuarial tables um, in the next couple of years. So I, I'm so on Paul's like because I'm on that committee as well. But I also think going forward, it should be something that you know everyone working within the school needs to understand because mm -hmm. it's not you know the budget's going to affect them the way they're going to teach. But if you know when we go through all of the different contractual negotiations, like it is something that you know the money's going to them, so they need to understand. You know, if we take it from one, it's going you know where it's going. So. So it's a significant annual investment, and Becky did do an amortization table with some assumptions, and at 5% to meet that 2040 um, liability, it's, it's a, about $1.5 million annually from now until uh, 2040. So it is a significant, significant um, impact on the regional budget moving forward. I just have a question on the on the elevator um, because so uh, was that something that was an event that would be covered by insurance or what's the chance of that and then you know if it wasn't covered where are we getting other funds do we have funds necessary to cover it like with E and D where would our E and D be after that and so forth. So, um, so we are working closely with insurance companies. We think that there is a high likelihood it will be covered under insurance because it was an electrical failure. Okay. Um, however, we've we've monitored monitored the bottom line of our bu budget very closely, um, and if we did have to find the money, we would freeze the budgets and and find the money within the appropriated budget that currently exists. Okay. <coughs> Can you talk a little more about the decision to use that $300,000 from the d, &D? Yeah, so I think that um, having many conversations with the, the town administrators, you know, Mark Purple in Southborough and John Kader in, in Northboro, um, talking about the overall budget landscape in both communities and looking at the financial uh, landscape for education pre-K through 12, and not just looking at it pre-K through eight and then nine through 12. Um, this really helps um, both communities in, in the sense that it helps maintain levy capacity. Um, so the longer we're able to maintain level, levy capacity and not have to go to town, the town's people for overrides to pass operational budgets, um, the better off we are. So that was a conversation we had around applying the $300,000 of E&D to the budgets. Um, this year, particularly just because of enrollments, Northboro would have been significantly impacted um, based on just the enrollment landscape that we see. If I could just expand on that a little. So we had, we had over a million dollars, um, which is kind of just about at the top level of the 5% that we're allowed to hold on to you know, by law. Anything, anything above that has to, uh, by law, go back to the towns. We voted a policy about a year or so ago that said we would try to always hold on to around 3% for E&D, you know, to just kind of give us some guidelines as to what we would or wouldn't throw back into the assessment calculation. Mm -hmm. By giving up the 300 grand into the assessment calculation, we still came well within the, the tolerance lines of the, of the, of the uh, budget policy that, that we established a year or so ago. So we still have, we still have, what, 600 and some odd thousand dollars in our, in our rainy day fund. Which is, you know, kind of a, a, a nice, a nice place for us to be. It's, it's unusual, uh, and uh, so it seemed like it seemed like the, the right thing to do, particularly with the, you know, just the optics of declining enrollments and increasing budgets. You know, it's, you know, we need to we need to address that as well. Thank you, Fred. Okay. 
So, do I have a motion to pass the FY21 recommended budget? When? I move. We have the. We have. Yeah, I'll wait. Question because uh, the capital, we talked about the capital improvement uh, lines. Were some things adjusted there to address because there were things that had been pushed off like two or three times. Yes. And I think there was, you were going to go back and look to see some of that be. So I did, did have a conversation with um, Mr. Gorman um, and identified the high priority um, capital items. We did not shift those on the plan, but we are looking at um, end of year funds to be able to support some of those. Um, one being the phone system. There were three items that Mr. Gorman thought were high priority at this point. Okay. I mean, I think the other conversation we had around the capital plan is we need a real, you know, we can't keep we have to have a real plan to to fund um, the items on the capital plan um, because it it accumulates. Are we looking at our like rentals and all that kind of stuff? Yes. Yeah, so we did um, increase our rental fees. Um, you know, in in the next item on, on the agenda is solar. So that's another conversation around how will we generate revenue, passive revenue, um, to fund some of these. Um, whether it's OPEB or capital plan items. So. Okay. Okay. We move that we approve um, the recommended FY2021 20, budget of uh, $24,562,373 with an assessment to, um, to Northborough. Uh, Oh, that's um, that's twenty. So that's north. Uh, that's twenty twenty. Where is the twenty twenty one? Oh, right here. Total. That not. Okay. All right. With a twenty, uh, with assessment to North Row of twelve million seven eighty six seven thirty nine, an assessment to South Row of seven million four hundred seventy three thousand two fifty seven. Do I have a second? Second. All right, so first by Lynn, second by Paul Bucca. All those in favor? All right. Now, do we have to do a public thing too or no? So next. Um, okay. Public hearing. Okay. Okay. Um, so the next is solar update. So um, tomorrow afternoon, the uh, solar feasibility group will be. Um, listening to two presentations around uh, moving forward with solar projects um, at Algonquin. Um, so we have a couple of uh, potential projects that we're looking at that have um, significant potential to earn passive income for um, the region. So more information will be provided to the committee after tomorrow's uh, presentations from um, two solar companies. How viable are these companies? Um, so we, one is ex extremely viable. Um, we've, we've done the homework. They're part of um, power options, which is how we secure our energy. And the other one we're still investigating. We've reached out to other communities, have used these two companies, and we've only received um, excellent feedback that they've met their commitments um, thus far. Is there initial, would there be an initial cost to so, the region? So no initial cost. Would there be any uh, maintenance costs? No maintenance region? costs. So we've also taken the potential contracts mm -hmm. and um, provided those to legal counsel for review. Um, and legal counsel thought that there was um, little to no risk to the region um, based on how the contracts were, were created at this point. And any installation costs? No the installation. So there would be no outlay of expense to us um, mm -hmm. as a regional system. So, um, so we uh, renting the, or is it like a, a lease situation as opposed to a purchase? So, and then it like deducts 
Correct. from the savings? How does that? So there are two different right? proposals. Each company has a different model. Um, the first model is is a lease, and we would have a reduced energy costs. Mm -hmm. The second proposal is we would actually it's a lease, and we would actually um, they would pay us on a monthly um, basis, and also potentially have um, provide us with capital to fund a capital project of some sort here in the district. Mm -hmm. The the difference between between the two companies, the one company is about rooftop um, solar, and the second company um, specializes in um, canopy. Um, so the roof one, does the high school need a new roof at the time at this time or no? So it's part of the contract that they would do an assessment of the roof um, and um, make sure that before any solar panels were put on that. The roof was in, in great condition and could um, does have the capacity and could hold the solar panels. Paul, so, so when when these panels and, and all the structures around them um, age out, you know, I, I suspect you don't just bring them to the nearest landfill. But, <laughs> I mean, are there are there provisions in the contract to? Kind of take care of that, and, and in particular, are there, I mean, and maybe maybe we can't get it, but are the provisions in the contract in case these companies go under, and we still have this you know, hazardous waste on our roof, or uh, they, uh, do they ensure that somehow, or is there a way we can make sure that 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 is considered? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, if all goes well with the contract, and it does meet the twenty-year threshold. That they are responsible for removing. Um, we can ask the question around what happens if, um, you know, my, my concern is not three years out, five years out. It, it is the 15 to 20 years out. Mm -hmm. um, the technology is changing rapidly. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we've talked about is is doing a smaller scale project and not, not outfitting the entire Algonquin um, roof with maximum solar, but doing a proof of concept um, on a smaller scale um, to see how the project um, benefits you know, energy costs. But that, those are some questions we'll be asking tomorrow. Right. Good, yeah, because it's tricky. I mean, you, you know, you'd like to walk, not run, except we just had the budget conversation <laughs> about you know, all the money that we need to yeah. create somehow or other. And uh, you know, I, I think, we, I think it, it, it's an interesting challenge. Well, they do. As I understand it, the company owns everything. So yeah, it, go, it would be there under, if they go under. That's that's a legit question. But <clears throat> and I guess doing some research around, obviously, solar companies have gone under. You know what happened? You know, do, do other solar companies come and pick that up, right. or making sure we have contingency plans for the worst case scenario? Maybe I'll maintain it while it's on there. Yeah. Okay. So that's we're usually like. Mm, um, there's little maintenance with uh, the solar panels. Um, I thought there's like a battery that you have to like change out every once in a while, isn't there? In each one of them. Well, there's like there is like a a battery, but um, ours was like a a 20 year life. Oh, okay. So it's it's pretty pretty uh, pretty long standing. So before we move forward, we'll obviously have a, a more formal presentation um, to the committee, as well as making sure that we have exhausted all of the questions and thought about short-term but also long-term impacts of having solar either in the parking lot or on our roofs. Yeah. Great. Adoption. Um, <coughs> next is policy development. So in your packet is a second reading of uh, sexual harassment in the school, A100, and it's the will of the committee uh, to vote to approve. Nothing has changed um, since the first reading. Second. Okay. Um, any questions or discussions at all? No? All right, so first by Sean, second by Paul. All those in favor? Okay. Um, and the next is audience sharing. So can I share something? 
Um, so, like Sarah said, the girls' hockey team is in the playoffs on Saturday at 1.30 in Watertown. And I'm going to give a shout out to them because they don't get great attendance. And they don't get a lot of student support or attendance either. And I would love, love for them to get people cheering them on because it's such a fun game. And it's just so different from the boys because they can't check. So they actually play the game and skate. Um, and it's really exciting. And they've had a great season. Um, so yeah, so that's my hot news sharing. <laughs> I'm curious the status of the contract, the collective bargaining. Yes, yeah, so we are. Um, we met with the association. Um, we're finalizing it. We'll be bringing it forth at the March meeting to ratify. So, okay. have they voted? They are a meeting with um, the presidents on, on Friday morning, and I believe they're going to be voting either Monday or Tuesday of next week. They are not foreseeing any. And they don't foresee any challenges or issues. Thank you. Um, and then next is personnel. So in your packet of the personnel report, so we have um, our two school nurses are retiring, um, so which is a significant change for Algonquin. So um, Mary Ellen Duggan is already in the process of recruiting school nurses for next year. Next month, does anyone have? So we're having the public hearing for the budget, a library presentation, the, re, um, the 2021 handbook. Is that a review or is it? It needs to be presented for review. Okay. It's with legal counsel right now. Okay. Um, and then a program of studies guide review. Is there anything else that anyone wants? Just the um, Student Opportunity Act plan. <laughs> And then have we like um, buses as far as bus contracts? So we actually open transportation bids today. Um, so we are um, in the process of analyzing the bids that we received. We received bids from two companies. Um, and for this particular procurement, it's lowest, lowest bidder. Um, so we are analyzing the information we received. Is one of them the same from this year? <coughs> Anyone have anything else? Okay. Do I have a motion to? So moved. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, first by Dan, second by Paul. Bucca. Any discussion? Anything? All right. All those. Thank you so much All for right. coming. Good.